let's get the GUI back up. Um, right, yes, that left window has changed because of the browser, so get another next term here. Now, I doubt if Falcon's going to start yet because we haven't installed QT again, which is, yeah, what's preventing it from starting correctly. And we should put that into the background, so I'm going to do Control Z. Oh, it's not going to work there. So let's just do it with an ampersand and then Control D to exit. And it didn't work by quitting the window for some reason. I think, like I say, it's probably because it's started um, through a shell file. Probably, I'm not sure exactly, but that's probably the reason. Right, so um, libsecret, we're going to look at gnome keyring, and this got back into our circular dependencies, I think, or maybe not, need debus and GCR, I guess if it builds with what we've got, it should be okay. Um, GCR. It's got a few requirements. So this GTK Plus has got lots of dependencies. Yeah, I'm not going to build that now until we actually need to build it. Um, right, let's just have a look, see what we've got here. So you've got, we've got this twice in the list. Right, because we're going back around here, curl and C make. And that leads us back to and key ring. I think I'm going to take a punt at installing this. We've got everything else installed, albeit some of these uh, need to be rebuilt with more dependencies, but I think if this builds okay, it should be sufficient. So it's going to BLFS and save this. So there's no extra commands here to put in, or extra options for the configure. So we'll run that as it is. So it's looking for something called GCK. I'm not sure what that is. Okay, right, I'm going to do what I've done before, is load up the single web page, um, duplicate this, read online, oh, sorry, download, right, link. to finish loading. Right, 
Control F, and wait for that to appear. Right, so now I'm going to look for GCK. which is GCR right okay well, that's interesting Oops. that's interesting oh there it is there right okay I haven't installed GCR yet I thought I had done it's just the tabs open right so GCR up, see what the requirement is for that. So I guess this is where is this gone then keyring? I guess it's probably the only requirement we've got here. We've got these other ones installed, yeah. So as long as we can get GCR installed. Um P11 kit. So I've got that installed, got new PG, object introspection, so it's just GDK plus we haven't got installed here. So I'll install this with a note to rebuild it after GDK. GCR. There's a few things here. Use this switch if you haven't installed GTK Plus. The GCR viewer will not be installed if this is passed to me. So we've got to put that in because um, we haven't got GTK Plus. But we've got GTK Dock installed so we can pass this switch in also. So let's do the SEDS first and create the build directory. And then copy this meson command in. Let's go back to after those two dots. Oops. And add in this switch and also this one to build the documentation. And we'll see if that builds okay or configures okay. Oh, I haven't copied it all. Equals true. Oh, right, okay. Unknown variable G E C R U I DEP. Don't know what that means. Let's have a look at this Mason log. Just see how build our oh, Mason logs here. make much head or tail of these ones it just comes up the arrow that we saw anyway um, let's have a look at the mise and options again that seemed to be quite useful previously so it's GCR UI depth
could be that the GTK dock, maybe. GPG path. Ah, oh, build object introspection files. Good, and I did see that in the log. And I thought we'd installed object introspection. Let's have a look. Oh, well, there's a chance we might not have done then. So that's chapter 9. No, I haven't. Right, so that is the problem. So I need to pull that one up next. So let's quit this. I think I've reread these packages so much and looked at them so many times I'm starting to believe that I've actually installed them when I haven't. So there it is there. Let's pull this oh, I'll have to click on that one first and I um and we need to put this up here. Yeah, just there. So just after GCR now. So this needs GDB Cairo we've got for test GJS to satisfy one test. GTK dot we've got make I think we've installed it. I'm sure I've seen that in my list of Python modules. Yeah. Right, but it's not there. Let's have a look at this GJS next. I'm sure I've seen that here somewhere. There it is there. Oh, so now we're going around in circles back to JS. Yeah, yeah, we're getting back round and round again. So I need to break this cycle again. So we definitely need GCR. GCR definitely needs object introspection. Which recommended at least. And GJS is optional to satisfy one test. So I'm going to install Gobject Introspection, put it down to reinstall after the optional dependencies have been fulfilled, which will include Mako. So, yep, that's the way to go, I think. So save link as. So it already exists. So I've already tried to download this before. So let's extract it. So there's some more build options here. So I'm going to create the build directory first. Okay. And then copy this Musen command. I'll go back just after these two full stops. So GTK doc it was true. Build and install the documentation. So we've got GTK doc again. We can do that. Cairo enabled. We've got Cairo. So let's. Enable that. If there's any failures that might be to do with car, I'll disable it um, as it needs to be reinstalled. Doc tool enabled. Enable the GIR doc tool and run related tests. So I'll have a go at that one as well. Doc tool requires markdown and Mako. Okay, so I'll leave that last option off. Okay, so now I'll run Ninja.
Okay, we're on Ninja Test now. So there's one failure there. Let's have a look at it. Looks like it's something to do with the character encoding then. I don't know what that is, it seems to be a recurring fault, seems to test seems to grab it but it doesn't seem to affect much else. Um, ah, now it's to do this markdown and the Mako. So uh, this one that's mentioned here, because it's mentioning markdown here. So that's probably why that one test is failing. Test.writer.py No, it's a different test that one. There's the test dot right, so there's two oh yes, there's two failures here. So I'm not sure why this one's failing. It does seem to be something to do with character encoding somewhere. Whether that's a mistake I've made in LFS or something I've done in BLFS since, I'm not quite sure. But it only seems to affect ninja tests. Um Not a lot I can do at the moment, really, because I um, can't sort of understand why that is. That in one code, it can't encode character. Order or not in range. It's almost as if this number's too big. So all I can do is install it. Hopefully at some point maybe that error will disappear if uh, something gets reinstalled. It could be the fact that I've only partially installed some packages at the moment uh, without their dependencies, so that could be the problem. Okay, that's done. So this is going to be rebuilt object introspection after the remaining options have been installed. But this helps break um, a cycle, so it should help us to complete some more of these tabs that are hanging around here, which we've got, and some of which are duplicates as well, like Rust. Let's see. So now we can move back onto GCR, so I'm going to tidy up. previous build. Now extract GCR. That almost certainly we've got everything else there that's required apart from Valgrind and GTK Plus. So rerun these commands here. And I'll recall See this configuration, so let's just check that GTK doc equals false. Oh, right, I didn't notice that before. Um, GTK doc's already been specified, so I don't need that bit, I can just change this to true. It shouldn't have mattered. I imagine it would have um, used the last setting, so it shouldn't have been a problem. Right, this might be an LD config required here. I think we've just installed that package. No, it's not. So why is that not finding that now? Let's put 
this back at false. Okay, so that GTK document was true. Oh, it was the APR documentation anyway, so I'm not particularly bothered about that. Um, but I presume it's looking for maybe GTK to enable that to work. So that's okay. So I'll just run Ninja. Wait for it to build. Right, that's finished building. So we can run Ninja test. It says it's got to be run from next terminal similar, so we're all right there. And looks like we might have got our usual error with the Ninja tests. Let's go back and have a look. So there's a GCR failure again. Oh, let's do the certificate. So for some reason it seems to be trying to do something with certificates and um, it's failed for some reason, I can't really see why. And we've got another here. Can get a session bus address. So again this could be dbus, it's not been built fully. So I'm going to ignore those two because of that and build what we've got and then um, I'm not sure if this one needs to be rebuilt or not, does it? Oh yes it does for GTK, yeah, so this will be rebuilt. It's failing on the install. GTK update icon cache. All oh, right, okay. So it's trying to update something with GTK. Even though we've told it it's not available. Um, I can only hope that it's installed enough. If it's updating an icon cache, that it's installed everything else it needs. So that's a bit unfortunate. Um, so I have to keep my fingers crossed that enough has been installed. And carry on. So GCR. Chapter 33. Right, 
that's right at the beginning, it's not actually in any alphabetical order because it's right at the beginning. It's probably because um, Gnome is designed to be built in its sequence of the packages that are there. So rebuild onto GTK plus our end object introspection. We'll shut that one down and hopefully known keyring will build successfully. So let's copy this. I can't paste that in there. No, I can't. No, it hasn't found GCR unfortunately. Uh, so I don't want to do the set again. I'll do the configure. No, it looks like I'm going to have to install GTK Plus, or at least part of it. Um, one thing I will run, I haven't run for a, a while, is the remove LA files tool. Let's see if this makes a slight bit of difference. Run this once more. I'll push the LD config again, but I shouldn't think that would make a difference. No, okay. So I'm going to have to load GCR up again and object introspection has got to be reloaded. I'm going to have to load up GTK now. GTK plus, oh, this is GTK plus 3 this is, if my mouse can stop switching the screen up and down. And this has got its own requirements. So once again, I'm going to just try and get away with the minimum. So there's this package first. And it's got its own dependencies. So this needs dbus and glib, which is what we're trying to get around to build. So, or, or rebuild rather. So let's start on with this. Okay, there's nothing to change here. Let's run this as it is. This is part of the X libraries we're in now. Okay, Ninja test, test it. And once again, it's failed at some point. In fact, it's failed on both of them. Right, there seems to be a problem with Dbus. Um, is it running actually? It is 
running. I think I need to install Dbus. You know, there seems to be so many packages that rely on it. Um, what did this need? Oh, it doesn't actually need a lot. Right, so I've got these two. Okay, let's uh, tidy up here again. And load up the bus glib. Python I think this is installed I just did this earlier no it's not A share. Let's try user lib Python three dot nine site packages. Yeah, that's there. I'm sure I did this earlier on. This is a little bit out of date. What's here? Feel like object. I think we did that one as well. Yeah, pretty sure we did this. Let's look for these. is gi underscore gi Cairo and gi.cpython yep that's definitely installed so yeah dbus glib isn't there so I think, I don't know why I've um, left this one actually. XML I remember we did earlier. And that's for documentation, so that may well fail anyway, unless it's for API stuff. Yeah, let's uh, install this. So let's extract it. this and just cross-reference with the comments that are down here so disable oxygen I haven't got that disable XML docs if you remove this parameter disable so we've got XML TO installed HTML documentation sounds good so I'm gonna press alt Hash doesn't work. Okay, that doesn't work. Um, let's put help in. Right, so let's 
so I want to change disable XML docs. So I'll remove that one. I've got disabled static, enable user session. There's that one above there. With system the user and system unit do equals no, that's okay. Doctor uh, I'll console author, let's set them down there. This PID file system socket. Don't use enable test on a production build. Don't use enable embedded. And lastly, the enable assert. So that's the only change I need to make. I'll run that. Now there's a slight chance that installing this may cause a problem with the X windows. Slight chance. Um, so what I'll do after it's installed, if it hasn't crashed, I'll quit the X windows and restart it just to be sure there's no problems. Okay, let's have a look at this. So it's found XMLTO, rebuild and generate files, no profiling, it's found glib. System D support. I guess that's the login D part that it mentioned here. With system D user and system unit do no. X11. XML docs. Okay, looks all good. Let's build it. Okay, that's done. See below for test instructions. So we've got to install this first. If you're using Desta, which you're not, so issue as a root user these two instructions. If you're still building your system in Troot and you have not started the daemon yet but you want to compile some packages that require debus to generate the debus UUID to avoid warnings when compiling some packages. Okay, we don't need to do that. If you're using your elogin D, create a symlink to the debus machine ID file. So this should exist in theory. Yep. DBus test cannot be run until after DBus glib has been installed. We have done that now. It must be run as an unprivileged user from a local session with the with bus address to understand the tests. You should make check. So let's go back to unprivileged user and make check.
So that's all successful. Um, I don't know why this is saying this total test week summary that everything's zero. I've seen that earlier on, but never mind. But the main body of tests all worked. So that's fine. Um, we'll run unit regression tests. Configure requires additional parameters which expose the functionality of the binary so that are not intended to be used in a production build. So now we can run the additional test, but because we're not going to install, um, it's not going to cause a problem with the installation because the installation is already complete.
Okay, so those tests have passed, that's good. The configuration, I can't remember if we did this or not, but it, it's an example, but it looks uh, valid. So let's just have a quick look at this file. It exists, well, it doesn't exist. Um, I guess we could put it in. That's the problem. It does suggest that that is the standard. Oh no, it's not. Sorry. Uh, so, on, local share demos services can be added. Uh, it's possible. This might have been a cause of some of the problems that's missing. Uh, let's just look at it again. ETC. D plus one session. So session.conf is there, but not the local. Share D bus one services. So no, it probably hasn't made a difference. There's no um, user local share dbus1 services directory at the moment, so it shouldn't have caused the problem. But um, I think I'll put this in anyway in case anything does um, actually live there eventually. So that's in, and Dbus Daemon should be running already. Um, boot script and start system. Why Dbus Daemon is using it? All right, perhaps it should be running Dbus Launch as well. Maybe that's the issue. Global X in it, I'll see. So I wonder what difference this will make. Maybe that's the problem. Um, while I'm here, I'm going to also add in. Um, X set minus DPMS, I think it was, to turn off the DPMS. X set minus DPMS. Oops. Yeah, that's disabled it, so that's the right way of doing it. Um, so I guess it could go here. Terminal. Yeah, 
seems to run okay okay so maybe that's something I've missed out let's cause some problems so I'll save that um, now really I should restart the debug server I think now if I do this it will cause a crash um, if it is going to crash this will be the time that it will happen so I'll restart it and see what happens it hasn't actually crashed it so that's good but having said that I'm going to tidy up Oh, is that from the testing, probably? Oh, that looks like that's hanging. Right, so it could be what I've just run in the terminal. I'm going to quit the browser. Right, and I can't actually exit with... Oh, yes, that's it. Control D. Um, it's going to the BLF directory here. Try and remove it from this point. No, it's not going to work here either and it's hanging again. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to quit and reboot. It's caused a problem as well, the looks of it. Right. Right, yeah, this has caused, I thought there might be issues, so I'm just going to do control or delete. So there's the chime. Grab menu up, press enter. So the debus has started okay, so that's good. Let's see if we can recover that directory now. That is still misbehaving. Right, so it was held on to by root. So D bus is yeah that's gone okay. So I'm going to start the X server. Uh, I'm just going to look at the log for Xorg. Make sure there's no errors. No, that looks all good. I can't see anything about Dbus. Let's grab it actually. No, there's nothing in there about the uh, bus. I think I've just created a file called grep. I have. So um, I'll get the X term back up to start Falcon. Again, I'll try and start Falcon the correct way. Right, so that looks a bit different because we're not getting the debus error now. So that's obviously that debus that I didn't add um, to the init xinit rc. So that's changed. So that's good. 
So I'll just start Falcon now. And I should put it into the background, so I'll quit it. And reload it in the background. And exit. And that hasn't stopped again. So I'll just kill that window. Okay, so D-Bus is done. So I'm going to mark that one off as completed now. Uh, D-Bus. Yeah. <coughs> Pretty sure that was complete, wasn't it? Yep. So now I'm going to go back to this GTK, GT. GCR and so on. Um, I think it was JLib, what was this for? I'm waiting for JLib maybe. Let's have a look at this deep work. I think it was JLib. something that needs to be installed by the looks of it because I've crossed it off unless I've forgotten to cross it off. Right, yeah that's probably waiting for GLib isn't it? Um, I guess that can be installed. Um, yeah, I'm not sure what needs that at the moment. I'll leave it for the moment. And just concentrate on this ATI, ATSPI2 core. Um, now it should run correctly, I hope. So let's try rerunning this. Hopefully, it'll pick up the debus session now. We've got it correctly configured. Better. Or was this the test? I can't remember now. Um, okay, so let's run the tests and see how we fare. Right, it's come up with that character thing again. Every failed. The A-type ATSP bus launch running. Session bus. Is it session? In the test suite, suite requires the GDP scheme as the package already installed. All oh, right. Yeah. It does that does? I thought that looked a bit strange. It's looking for something that was part of the package. Memory test is known to time out. Okay. So it looks okay. Um, I'll install the package that looks good and now I'll rerun the test that's looking better and we've got this encoding character thing again so apart from that uh, the memory didn't time out funnily enough but yeah that looks good now so I can sign this one off as complete. So it's chapter 25. X libraries. And this is ATSPI2 core. And move on to this one. This needs 80k. Requires glib and 
object introspection, so that's okay. So let me tidy this one up. Download this tool. And start building. So it's quite a straightforward build again. And there's no test suite. So I can X libraries eighty K, that's done. So now we can install this eighty SPI to eighty K. Again, just copy and paste this. Ninja test needs a graphical session, we've got that. There shouldn't be any problems with this, apart from the usual error I've been getting at the end. Yep. I'll just scroll back, it says OK, OK, so that's good. So I just need to install the package. Um, if you're installing package into your system using Dester method, which is not, so you can ignore that, that's that package built. This is ATSPI two eighty K. So I'll shut that tab down. Now we're on to GTK again. Tidy this up. Next we need GDK Pix buff. Okay, so we're getting into the realms of graphics packages again. Glib we've kind of got libjpeg turbo. Requires CMake and NASM or YASM. So let's do NASM first. As it sorry, let's do NASM because it's first in the list. We've got these two for the documentation, so that's handy. Let's save the package. There's some optional documentation here. Now, whether that's the same as what we're going to build or not, I don't know. But we can download it anyway. doesn't mention how the documentation is generated but we can put it into the source tree we'll look to it so let's extract NASM extract it build Let's just run this configure to see what it says at the end. Um, so I don't know if the generating is generating on based on that documentation file that's been downloaded and there's more processing that needs to be done, or if that is the final documentation. And you you can just install that or you can not install it and use the ASCII docs and XMLTO to generate documentation or indeed is it additional documentation. Oh, 
Oh, looks like there. Let's have a look in the dock. So there is PDF file there that does get installed. There is a PDS there, a PS file there as well. So maybe. Maybe just the, the the documentation file that's downloaded just gets installed and nothing gets built anyway. But we might see that when the build actually happens. So let's run that now. Okay, didn't really notice anything there that was building documentation, but still. So let's install it now anyway. Okay, that's done. So that's chapter 13 programming. Turbo that we've got the requirements it just says NASM or YASM. I'll only install YASM if it's necessary. So now let's save this link. Okay, source forge again, is it? Yep. So there's another option there for libjpeg 8, which enables compatibility with libjpeg version 8. Um, so I'm not sure if that's a good thing or not. Let's see what version is installed in Beyond the Lips from Scratch. see any other JPEG type library so um, whether that's a JPEG version rather than it does say lib JPEG version 8 um, I'll add it in anything that makes things more compatible has got to be a good thing so I'll build the directory first, build the build directory first, then copy this CMake command, add in this option here, and then finally add in the two dots. And run make.
that's built, let's run the tests. Okay, those tests at 100% pass, it says so that's good. Let's do make install. And that's done. So let's tidy up. Uh, so that's chapter 10, lib jpeg turbo, don't think this is a reinstall was it, no, so now GDK picks buff again, we've done lib PNG, I'll just check in the book to see if it's been crossed off. It has shared mime info. Well, we've got all the requirements there, so that's good. Let's save it. So we'll just copy the commands here, we don't need to do anything else. Interest is XDG MIME not compiled, test suite cannot run. Check hacking for info. Let's test the package as it suggests we should be able to. Everything's run okay, got the usual error, so I think that's fine. Ok, 
Okay, so that's installed. General Utilities. Shared my info. It's done. Back to GDK picks buff. Let me tidy up. Now we've got recommendation lib RSVG. Got some requirements. Um, got Caro installed, kind of. Pango. Funkov with config we've done. Must be built with free type using half buzz 2.9. So we need to now build half buzz and then we've got to rebuild free type for the half buzz functionality. So let's do this the other way around. So I'm going to be reinstalling this at a later time. Alright, um, recommended dependencies is not strictly required to build a package, however you might not get expected results at runtime if you don't install them. So that's interesting to note. So I will actually build this and put it down to rebuild after the um, recommended and optional have been built. So let's save this link. She says about Cairo needing to be rebuilt after half buzz as well, so that's going to happen. So, what have we got here? Build type release, graphite enabled, required for building. So, I'm going to have to set that to disabled um, because I haven't got that installed. So let's make the build directory and copy this and put disabled, benchmark disabled and docs false. find if it needs anything else that we haven't got. So it looks alright. So yeah graphite's not going to be installed and the rest of it looks fine. So I'm ninja to build this.
Okay, so that's uh, finished building and I'm going to run the test now. So again, it's failed right at the end because of this character set thing, but apart from that, um, everything's passed. That was run. Oh, hang on. Actually, there's one that hasn't there. Oh, right, it's to do with this Latin one codex thing. Might have, after I've done these videos, if it's not gone, I might have to research that to make sure it doesn't happen again in case it's something I've done. So I'm going to install this. And while that's running, I'll mark it down as a rebuild. the options have been installed. Okay, so it's finished installing. I'm going to tidy that one up. And move on to free type. So this is going to be the reinstall for free type, and then it will be done just looking at the dependencies that are required. Got all the other dependencies, lib PNG, which and Broccoli uh, have been installed. I'll just check properly, I'm sure I've done that. Chapter 9. Yep, that's done. So, let's do the documentation again. Um, so this time I'm not going to install without halfpass because we've now got that. So we can just copy the instructions as they are. There's no test suite, so we'll install package. And just run these commands again to install documentation, just in case um, part of the installation was to 
delete stuff or maybe I don't know um, probably not actually because these are commands just to copy and paste the uh, files but there's no harm in, in doing this so that should be free type done now tidy that up chapter 10 free type yeah we've got a note saying to reinstall it after half buzz so that's all complete now and I can shut that one down go to pango so we've got font config actually I've just seen a note saying it needs to be reinstalled after the options a quick look at see what they are so we've got that, that, that and that. Uh no, we've got tax live. I'm not sure what effect that would have. Oh uh, if you've done one. Okay, um let's have a look at this one. So we could build that. Yes, it depends whether we want to get the documentation or not. Um, I do tend to like documentation, so maybe what I'll do is install this and just to put notes to say reinstall it after text live. So, save this. no real options to speak of in the configuration so I'll just copy and paste this test it it done okay so that's chapter nine JS O N C dash O one five Building font config. Yeah, it's just the documentation really that's going to be missing from this, so that's uh, not so bad. So the disabled docs is already there, that's the only option that's given. So copy and paste the commands to configure and build. Okay, it says um, further down that there's pre-generated documentation so I guess we can just install that um, save having to rebuild this package although it's not too onerous um, just get on with the uh, actual build itself <coughs> So, make, check, test this. I'm 
that's good. I can install. Yeah, once again, I'll copy the documentation. I've probably done it already. There's no harm in overwriting stuff that's there. That's done. So configuration. It's all about configuring it for fonts there. I'm not going to spend too much time looking into that. Uh, it does say generally do not want to edit the file, but there's other f other config files there. So look at that if we come to have to configure any fonts. But I think I'm going to knock this one off as complete. And move on to Pango now. So we now need Freebody. Let's tidy this one up. So there's no particular options here. Same as usual with these ninjas. Install them, test and, uh, sorry, build, install and test. Okay, ninja test. Expect we'll see the usual character set error. But tests will run, so I'll just install this now. That's done. So this is chapter 10. Everybody is complete. Back to Pango. Optional canter of fonts for tests. Guess we could try and install them. So this takes us outside of the LFS book. So I guess we want to go for the last version. And we we'll probably want to download that file there. at the checksum as well to make sure that it's downloaded correctly. Oh, I need to tidy this one up, that's why I can't find that tarball. Shot two five six um file. Right, just quickly eyeballing those digits, first few and last few, they match, so it's it's a good download. So let's have a look, see what we've got here. Let's have a look at readme. So it looks like we have to let's read what the LFS book says. 
see if it gives us any hints. available here we do just look like we need to install stuff so let's just look at that readme file again so we need to run python 3 first actually can I load this in here open file like what I do first of all is to run this command okay then run this so because we're unixoids as they put it we run that command there if you're on Windows you run that command instead so it says install means and an injury unless it's already present on the system so I've already got that then we need to looks like we download this file requirements This looks like this is something I didn't really want to do, which is install what look to be other binaries, possibly. I guess this seems to be more of a thing with um, a lot of packages that will download stuff while they're building, which is kind of strange because you don't get a stable environment then unless there are specific packages or specific versions being downloaded but if the download is not available for any reason for example the internet's not there or the website's down then it means you can't build your package which could be problematic So it's telling us there's a new version of pip. Let's do this build. It's done and then run this ninja command. Build and install. So that should be done with a sudo I guess. So that has put some fonts into Cantorel. So I don't know what glyphs are, um, but we've got some fonts installed. Um, 
let's run this again. It says to, I'll try to go at this, to run this if we haven't already done so. Oh yeah, it still is in the environment but it looks for it. It's prefixed the prompt. So let's run this. It seems we need to run this command next. This command. Now it's just edit the dot glyphs file and round trip back. Um, so I guess we can have a quick look at that. I, I don't know what I'm doing, so I doubt I'm going to change anything. didn't make any sense to me. So I'll just leave that as it is and then run this command. Oh, I just realised this, this is under contributing, so I wonder if this is not really doing anything to the system. So maybe that's pointless running these commands here. So I'm going to quit that. Go up to the top here where it gives an example of how to uh, tell font config about the new font. So if we look at the user share fonts. Um, right, didn't install it there, did it? I didn't install it. Right, I'm going to have to look for them. Find, share. Use a local share fonts Cantorel. So So that's the only one in there. I think what I'll be tempted to do is to move that into user share fonts where the rest are. So move user local share fonts Cantorel and move that to user share fonts where we've got our other ones as root and then oh, let me come out of this environment to control oh right didn't realize that would happen let's go back in again Start forking again oh, in this terminal. And I will quit. Oh, right, now it is leaving, so that's. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, yeah, it's still not working. So I'll just kill that. Um. So yes, what I need to do now is to run this fc cache command. 
as the root FC cash minus V forward slash user share fonts and we should have should have Cantorell there now and you can see it says succeeded at the end so font config knows about the new Cantorell fonts so we can get rid of that go back to Pango so yeah there they are for the test it, um, did see somewhere there it said that no uses them so it's probably good that we've installed them so now let's do sysprof okay needs gtk3 funnily enough and it's optional okay so pango is going to have to be rebuilt after sysprof has been installed so i'll make a note of that now After sysprof and sysprof itself needs GTK three. So now let's install Pango as it is. So we've got object introspection, so we can leave that there. What does this do? So we don't have any option, which is not installed in the system, okay. So I'll just copy that as it is. Okay, that's strange. It's issuing messages saying certain package config files to do with Pango are missing, which is kind of strange. Um, but anyway, it's not actually said that it's an error. So let's run the test. It says here that one will fail or is known to fail. I uh, didn't see. If, no, there's a skip. Two skips, but apart from that, I'm ignoring that fail. I'll get at the end there. That looks successful. So ninja install. Configuration. There's some environment variables and so on there if you're interested in that. Apart from that, I'm gonna tidy that up. I've got a note to rebuild it after sysprof.